So top level programming, and I'm not even sure that that's what they call it, but that's what they call it in at least one instance. This is the teeny tiniest little enhancement to .NET. And I don't know that I will ever use it. I used it just once because I thought, oh, hey, that's an opportunity to use it. I better use it. So um, I'm gonna show it. Uh, it's new to .NET 5, I think I mentioned. And uh, let's almost skip all the slides, but what is it? It's a script like syntax for your main source file. I don't know that it applies anywhere else. And uh, the apps really need to be so small to make it worth it that there just aren't that many things that you can do with it. So let's start just doing it. So I'm just gonna create a working directory here. And I'll do a .NET new console. Give it a name, um, hello world. Let's have a look at what's in there. There's just the hello world directory. And in the hello world directory, I have a project file and a startup file. And if I had a solution file, it would be in the top directory, just above hello world. But since I only have the one project, it didn't, it didn't one. Uh, if I open up Visual Studio Code, I can double click on program and we'll just work from there. So it's, it's giving me an error about my update state, but it will just run it from the command line and not worry about it. So if I do a new, a new application for a console from the console template, this is what it's going to look like. And we've seen people uh, from various programming backgrounds with various programming abilities go and write Three hundred and fifty lines of code right here, and that's where they put the program. Well, I, I don't like that. Um, but if your program is small enough, maybe it's okay to keep it all in here. If your program has any potential to grow, or you don't know how long it's going to be, I, you know, this is the only imperative line in your Hello World program. That's important to note. Uh, so if I just cut this and put it in my clipboard and say new program, e, sorry, program B e equals new. E. Program and then p dot execute. And then I'll control period to generate that method f12 to navigate to it, and then put my hello world here. I've expanded my program a little bit, but now I have you know an object oriented program, and I can you know kind of go from there. And the only real static method in here is that main, and it's only two lines long. It's a small step up, but this is this is how I you know at least the first step I like to take to a more uh, a growable, larger program. So a top-level program is kind of the opposite of that, where we want to probably simplify and shrink that application. So I'll just undo my way back in here. And this is where we started. A top-level program is really simple. You basically just take all of this and get rid of it. There's our top level program. Does the same thing, but because we've done it this way, you know, it's pretty much all the stuff that's normally in that static void main. And now we just don't have a static void main making it look like this, this strange procedural monster. It's more like a script. And I think that was their intention, the way they kind of word it in the Microsoft docs. But, uh, you know, if you're doing scripting, this might, might make it more palatable but I don't really know that it simplifies the application that much. In any case, there really is nothing more to it. I don't have to change anything in a project or set anything, indicate anything. I don't build it differently. I don't deploy it differently. I just put it in there and build it. So if I do .NET run, it should just build it and run it. And it works. So there's, I didn't have to do anything to the application 
except delete the template code that started on the new application to make it a top level app. Very simple. So if you're building an application or a script that's small enough to really make this worthwhile, it's probably something that is small enough to be in gists. So that's what I did with my application. I can only get into gists from Edge, so I'm gonna open Edge instead of Chrome. Please pardon me, it's not my fault. Um, Chrome has a strange behavior where it recursively redirects and the site won't let me in. Anyhow, um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with gists, but we have github.com and everyone in the world knows github.com. But gist.github.com is a little side thing that's available. GitHub will allow you to put your projects in there and they have version control and they have peer review processes and they have Git integration and you know oodles of everything else. So gists are not necessarily uh, a whole project, they're just a snippet. But they have version control, they're searchable. Uh, you can make them private, you can leave them public, it's up to you. And this is where I put some snippets that I, you know, I end up writing a program over and over again, but the thing's fewer than 500 lines long. Uh, I just put them in here and I can take them with me from job to job or from home to work or from client to client. And so I have put in here one of my gists for uh, hashing. I noticed, uh, I've been using this Microsoft hash tool for, uh, you know, for years. And I don't know if anybody else uses it, but the Microsoft File Checks and Integrity Verifier is a console application. It's, it's from Microsoft, so it seemed a logical one to choose when I needed to download a file and then check its checksum against what was cited on the website to make sure that it hadn't been fiddled with. But it doesn't support the latest hash types. It didn't support, namely, SHA-512. So when I was downloading some questionable files from a questionable site for questionable activities, which shall not be named, <laughs> I wanted to verify their integrity. And this thing only does MD5 and SHA-1. So I needed a new tool. So I just started Googling and I wasn't happy with any of them. They all have malware. They all have big old fat GUIs that I don't want to deal with. They all have Explorer integration. I don't want any of that. I just wanted a console replacement for this. So, you know, after an hour of fiddling around with this, I said, Dan, I'm going to cry. I need help. And Dan said, but Bill, you're a developer. Stop your whining and build one. So I said, fine. That's not a true story. So I'm just going to do a, a search in gist for uh, my hash. And I don't know why, but it comes up with mine first. That's great. So the MF hash script is actually probably, in my opinion, kind of big for a top level program. But I'll just pretend that I wrote it instead of wrote it right here instead of getting it from gist. And I'll save that and I'll run it. And, you know, half of this program is just verifying that the command line is right because it's a console application. So it tells me that my usage is wrong. And I, I've named it hello world, but let's pretend that it's named MF hash. And I can say, I just want to hash the, the CS file itself. Come on now. Okay. Stop that. Just ignore that first command. I don't know what I was doing. So I just told it to go and build uh, hashes for these pro for these uh, hash algorithms. Uh, I don't specify which one. I'm trying to keep it simple. But now I have my SHA-512, and this is available wherever I will, you know, want to put the DLL. And I won't go into it in this presentation, but of course I want to build this as a, a self-contained EXE so that I don't have to have .NET installed even if I don't want to. But uh, once I have this application, I want to go and create a gist for it so I can get to it somewhere else. It's pretty easy to do. Um, I'll go in here and go to gist.github.com and right here on the landing page there, I can just put my new, or my new snippet. So this is like pastebin.com except it's intended to be permanent and has version control. And those are two distinct distinguishing features of it. 
There may be other systems out there that do it, but I don't need a second one. This one's good. So I can give it a file name and I'll say um, in a hash. Believe me. And this is C sharp, so I'm going to do tabs. And there are four spaces each. And here I can specify whether it's going to be secret or public. I only want to create secret just most of the time. I don't need the world coming and saying, hey, there's a bunch of new stuff. I don't care if they're using my stuff. You know, your, your mileage may vary, but all my stuff is secret. And then if I want to share it with somebody, I can. Um, there we go. Now, if I go and do a search for NF hash, it should show up. Uh, it should show up. Well, it's not showing up. I think it might take a minute, but even the one that came up a minute ago isn't coming up now. Uh, in any case, you'll find it. But you don't have to do a search for it either. I can just go to uh, gist.github.com. And up here, you have view your gists. And here are all my gists. Well, not all my gists, but you know, there's, there's my latest. And so you can see that I can fork it. I can add files to it if I really want to make it complicated. But if you're going to do that, I feel like you should just have a GitHub project. And if I can, it points out here that it's secret. I can click on it and I can go to uh, download and I can add to, uh, I can click raw to do a copy and paste. And I can delete it. But I haven't deleted one yet. I'm going to delete this one, but I can edit it. So I really have full control here. Uh, there's nothing that I can think of that you, you're not allowed to do with this, except possibly, I, I haven't tried to make one public and then rescind it and make it private again. I don't know if you can do that, but I have no reason to think you couldn't. So I have this MF hash and I'll take it with me everywhere I go. It'll always be available and that problem is solved. And the next time someone comes and cries to me and says, I can't get a SHA-512 program I like, I'll say, but I'm a programmer. I'll give you one. 